All right, One Piece chapter 1,121. I, I'm very happy. I wasn't, I wasn't too blown away by the last chapter, but this one, this one just brought me joy. So it's basically just two speeches. We have Vegapunk continuing his message, and it's beautiful. We have um, Bonnie getting her feelings out and attacking Saturn with Luffy. And it's the catharsis ending for them that I needed after the trauma that was the Kuma flashback and Bonnie flashback. And I'm just, I'm just very, very happy. I don't even remember how this starts off. Yes, we start with the Sunny has not quite fallen down to the ship next to Saturn yet, and I feel like the last chapter had them falling in. Doesn't matter. So Luffy is fighting Saturn, but more holding him off as Saturn wants to finish Bonnie off, and probably Kuma as well. Get rid of the Buccaneer race, get rid of the meddling that is Bonnie with her pseudo Nika fruit that I'm still convinced he helped develop and considers it a failure, and he doesn't like his. Maybe he considers it a failure because he thought it was a failure and couldn't get Nika. Now that he's seen that uh, she was able to transform into a version of Nika's devil fruit and he didn't think that would be possible. He's upset that he didn't see this as a possibility. I'm going with anything that makes Saturn, this man of science, look like an idiot. Comparing himself to Vegapunk, ridiculous. But um, Bonnie is very angry in this moment. There are tears in her face. She's mumbling. She's upset. And she is furious at seeing Saturn's face. Luffy holds him off, uh, but she's back in her Nika form. I, she, I don't think she ate anything to regain stamina. I think this is all just like force of will. As she's looking at Saturn, the man who has taken everything from her, and is just like, you are no god. How dare you compare yourself to a god? There are gods in this world. Her faith in Nika is completely at its highest at this point. She says there are heroes too. Remembering her father who did everything for her. The ultimate hero in this story in her eyes. How she grew up alone. How Saturn specifically took everything from her. How could you do this to my mother to experiment on her? How could you do this to my family to rip them apart? She's imagining a world where Kuma and Ginny were together, where she was born into love the entire time and being together. But instead, she was alone. She wanted to die for how alone she was. And it is all Saturn's fault. She says, uh, all I ever wanted was to live in peace. And she, her, she has like tears streaming down her face. She's upset, but it does kind of remind me of one of my favorite lines in fictions. It's uh, a character is just like, I would have lived in France my entire life. It's like, I never would have caused problems for you, but you, you're you the one who like killed my husband, husband and dragged me back into this war. And then she stabs him. And I'm like, good line. Good line. Your fault for bringing her into this. She would have lived a peaceful life elsewhere, but you screwed up her life and now you got to face her and she's going to kill you. And I love that. I love that for said character. I love this for Bonnie. It just reminded me of that and I don't know why. But she is at full power and her and Luffy have a combination attack and it's gorgeous. They're both in their Nika form. It's a two spread page. I want that framed on my wall. It is perfect. And when they land the Nika punch onto Saturn, he is obliterated. It's, I'm sure he's going to be back. He's going to regenerate. I don't really care. He is torn to pieces. These uh, Gorose are durable. And holes everywhere. Legs torn off. Face smashed. Gone. I'm, I'm, I'm in awe by Luffy and Bonnie together. And the emotion in these moments was, was a highlight of this arc. Um, on a side note, there was Kizaru, who's semi-unconscious, but I'm feeling like he's hearing what Bonnie's saying. And I was back and forth for a while, but I really need him to change sides in order to stand with Bonnie. I really, really need that to happen. I wanted him to stay like Kag in the machine, just doing his duty kind of character, but now I need him to switch sides. I need him to have heard what Bonnie said, feel that emotion, see Nika, two Nikas, uh, remember his time with Kuma and Vegapunk, and just be like, all right, I got no choice now. I have to betray the government. I need that for Kizaru. I didn't think I needed it, but I need it. Uh, the Sunny is falling down. Uh, Usopp is screaming, we're all gonna die. Zoro's just there drawing a sword, being ready for it. It does remind me of Ennis Lobby, where it's just like, do you have a plan to land this thing? Of course I have a plan to get down. It's like, what is it? We fall. I, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I don't like it when the Sunny or the Mary fell, because it could damage the ship, and I need the Sunny to be okay, but it's, it's a sturdy ship. It'll be fine. If not, we're going to Elbat. Be easy to fix it there. 
But the second, like, interspersed with everything that's going on with Bonnie and uh, Luffy and uh, Saturn is Vegapunk's message. And he's talking about a day of awakening is about to be here. And this, ah, oh, I haven't been watching the anime, really. I, I, I need to see this animator. I need to hear his voice speak these words. The day of awakening is coming where all the secrets of the void century will be revealed that they know the ancient weapons from that time have been allowed to continue to exist. And again, we know Joy Boy was the one, theoretically we know this, Joy Boy was the one who wanted them to continue. So the weapons were not likely created by the factions who became the world government. They were probably on Joy Boy's side, or he took control of them near the end of the war and made sure they existed to be continued to use in the fight. But during this uh, talk, we have a, a cut to Shirohoshi and Vivi. Shirohoshi obviously being the Poseidon, love my darling crybaby princess, but then you see Vivi, she's looking gorgeous, I love her. But ah, uh, I'm my theory that she will be the one to control the Uranus is um, higher than really ever, which means I'm going with Eam took over Lily's body as Vivi's ancestor to gain control of the Uranus, and then Vivi will take that back from him or her body-wise. I, I, I want that, I need that, and it would be beautiful to see my favorite princess controlling that uh, ancient weapon. I need that. Um, he talks about there's still being power out there. We see the, the residents of Skypea, and it's presumed by the like Aztec-inspired designs on the moon that when they came down, supposedly bringing the ancient weapon with them from the moon to land on Skypea and, and kind of originating there, maybe the power of the ancient weapon has left something behind at Skypea. There's been talk about uh, they seen that blue serpent thing as a god. I, I Something in this general area, the, a power source might be located around there. I'm hoping a dragon. I'm hoping they brought a dragon from the moon and is located in this area which will be used to um, power the Uranus. I'm going with that. Uh, Vegapunk is talking about those with uh, rare powers, unique ancestry, uh, so those who are different, have been persecuted from this time due to something that happened in the past. And whether that's the Fishmen, the Lunarians, um, we see uh, Whitebeard, or Marco remembering Whitebeard, talking about uh, gods who lived... Uh, years ago, uh, cut to the Lunarian's king, is remembering how his people were hunted down, how he was experimented on, uh, the government being interested in information about them. We see um, Pudding about being bullied for having the Three Eyes power and how that's going to play into it. The Buccaneer race, how all these uh, elements are going to combine into the story because they likely side it with Joy Boy because that's the only reason I can think of for why the government would be against them. How that broken promise with the fishman come in, I'm not, I, I want a corruption arc, but I, I don't want Joy Boy to have bet betrayed the fishman outright. So I don't know, and I don't know how the Buccaneers and the Lunarians and the Three-Eyed Race comes into play. Uh, he continues with, there will be a reckoning in days to come, uh, cut to Water 7 at 100%. Iceberg will be ready to protect his people. He's already thinking of something. It's like, all right, we're going to be on a floating boat, floating trains. I'm going to make something. It's a floating weapon. You come after my people, I will blast you down. Uh, and I, oh, I didn't want it before, but I kind of want uh, the CP0 agents, not sure if I want Lucci, to come back. It's like, hey, can you rehire us and we'll protect you because we're, we're with you now. I don't need everyone to switch sides, but maybe one. Can, can, um, can our favorite giraffe, or least favorite giraffe, favorite giraffe, come back to Water 7, just be like, I'd like to put in an application resume to work here again and protect them? Because I kind of love that. Just him. Just only him. Um, he talks about, I have faith in humanity, in, wis in their wisdom, uh, in their preparations, no matter what is to come. I have faith in science, and that's very Vegapunk, and I love it. And he just has this idea for the future. Um, the one I was writing, it like buzzed off when he sang a name, died 20-odd years ago. Um, I'm assuming Roger died, I think he said 25 years ago. 
uh, Whitebeard died 22 years ago, and these passing of giants onto the next generation will shape and change the world. But there are some of those who cannot be oppressed. Of course, this being the Straw Hat specifically, uh, but many people who are fighting back and refuse to bow down to the world's government. And uh, him saying that, is that a coincidence or was this all Roger's plan? And we also previously seen like Rayleigh crying or drunk past out, but also Shanks having gotten drunk on his ship. And I doubt it was the stress of fighting kid. Um, so I'm going with they are like, God damn it, Vegapunk, you're spilling too many secrets. Roger's plan specifically meant that these people had to figure stuff out for themselves. You can't be spilling all the secrets. So it might be going against Roger's original plan. But that being said, I'm almost certain Roger's original plan was, okay, the Poseidon's not born yet. We're also here too early for whatever uh, Joy Boy had planned. Joy Boy hasn't uh, the Nika fruit hasn't reclaimed itself thing. So we found this. Shanks, it's your job to get it to my son. I really feel like Shanks was trying to get to Ace, but Luffy ate it. And he's like, well, damn, I guess plan's being adjusted again. I, uh, I want to know what Roger specifically had planned and what he had set up. Resurrection. Talk to him in the underworld. I need to get to the underworld. Uh, he ends with saying the fate of the world will be decided by who finds the answers that Joy Boy has left behind. Who finds the one piece? Who gets there first? So the main contenders of who are closest to it would be Luffy, Blackbeard, uh, Shanks, and Buggy. But then you have gorgeous, gorgeous uh, cover page, not cover page, two page spread, which also includes Eam and uh, Kobe and who else is there? Magma Bastard. Uh, there's Dragon, Kuzan, whose loyalties with Blackbeard seem sketchy at best. I kind of want him to stay a traitor. I know he's probably playing double agent, but I'd almost want him to stay traitor. Uh, there's Moonbeard, Face, Shanks' possible father. And then there's someone I don't recognize. It's just like a shadow. So he's in a shadow the same way Eam's in a shadow. Uh, he's pulling out a sword. And I'm like, Shanks' evil twin brother. Um, the man with the burn scar. I hope it's the man with the burn scar, but... Considering the sword, I'm going with likely Shanks' evil twin brother. Um, but that being said, it watch it be Drake. Because every time I don't recognize a character, it's ex-Drake. I, I, I loved, 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 loved this chapter. The art, the story, the narrative, the words, the speech, the emotion, the... <sighs> Bonnie's getting her frustration at the, that cathartic moment it's all it's all beautiful and purpose we don't know what the iron giant's plan he's still fighting in the background um but he hasn't blown himself up yet and i hope he doesn't so i'm i'm very 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 happy with this chapter so talk to me about who you think the shadow person is don't please tell me it's not drake i don't want to miss forgotten what he looked like three times in a row um, I, I, I really think it's, uh, Shanks' evil twin, but I want the man with the burn scar to hurry up and come into the story. Um, do we think Eam is in Lily's body? I feel like that gotta be a given, and if it isn't what's happening, I will be shocked. What do we think of Kuzan and Kizaru? Whose side are they gonna be on at the end? I, I just have so many. Who's gonna, who is going to have the Uranus, the Pluton, and Poseidon? How are they all going into this? I really think Vivi is connected to the uh, Uranus now. How will Magma Bastard die? Who's who's killing him? I'm hoping Sabo. Sabo's also in the cover spread of hunting for the One Piece. I'm, oh, I love it. I love it all. I love it all. All right. Talk to you later.